in this video i am going to uh, discuss with you about deep learning models what are the different types of neural network models what do you mean by recurrent neural network what do you mean by convolutional neural network so i am going to discuss with you about different types of neural networks and how the customer churn so how the customer churns are being predicted so how many people are uh, removed from the that is customer churn prediction using this neural network model deep learning methods so this is what i am going to uh, discuss with you today so today is the final day of my uh, 30 days advanced python master class program so this is what i am going to discuss with you today so basically what do you mean by deep learning or neural network models so uh, i was discussing with you about different types of machine learning algorithms what do you mean by machine learning and what are all the different types of machine learning algorithms so today i am going to uh, discuss with you about deep learning models what are all the different types of deep learning models i am going to discuss with you about rnn recurrent neural network models so in this kind of neural networks so i have different types of neural networks i can go for rnn cnn convolutional neural network models so i have different types of neural network models so firstly i am going to discuss with you about rnn recurrent neural network models so in this kind of network so data can flow in any direction so this type of networks recurrent neural network models they are used for applications such as language modeling or nlp natural language processing so this kind of neural networks are used for any of these applications language modeling nlp task so the basic concept behind rnn so recurrent neural network models i have to use the sequential information so whenever you consider a normal neural network model so all my inputs and outputs are independent of each other so if i want to predict the next word in a sentence so i have to know which words come before it uh, so they are called as recurrent because they repeat the same task for every element of the sequence the output is based on the previous computations clear with us so what do you mean by this so we have different types of neural networks so what do you mean by neural network models similar to human brains so we are going to mimic the human brains neurons so the human brains it consists of millions of neurons so it's going to mimic the human brains and we are going to come up with some important prediction result so technically each and every neuron they are called as perceptron in neural network model so recurrent neural networks models they have memory and they capture information about what has been previously calculated so what is the main difference between the feed forward neural networks and the recurrent neural network models so basically you should understand so what are all the major differences between a feed forward neural network and a recurrent neural network model so what do you mean by this recurrent neural networks so it is one important neural network model so i have different types of ans i can go for rnn recurrent neural network model cnn convolutional neural network model or i can go for mlp multi layer perceptron so rnns they have some memory and they capture information about what has been previously calculated so they can use information in a very long sequence you can see here so this is how my rn and recurrent neural network model looks like so i have an input layer for example these two are present in my input layer so from the input layer it is given to the hidden layers you can see here so all these are the different neurons that are present in the hidden layers and finally it is given to the final output layer so recurrent neural network models so from from this so previous output previous feedback so the model learns and we are going to get the final prediction result 
so lscms so long short term memories of the most widely used rnn recurrent neural network model so we have different types of rnn recurrent neural networks so together with convolutional neural network models rnns have been used as a part of the model to generate descriptions about unlabeled images clear with us so i have different types so deep learning it is an advanced version of the machine learning concept it is called as deep learning so i have recurrent neural network models i have convolutional deep neural networks so what do you mean by this convolutional deep neural network so i can go for rnn recurrent neural network models or i can go for convolutional deep neural networks so what do you mean by this convolutional deep neural network models if i'm going to increase the number of layers in the neural network and i'm going to make it deeper it increases the complexity of the network so this is what is called as convolutional deep neural networks so it allows us to model functions that are more complicated so number of weights and biases it will exponentially increase so what do you mean by this convolutional deep neural network model so cnns are exclusively used in computer vision so they have been applied in acoustic modeling for acoustic speech recognition clear with this so what do you mean by this convolutional deep neural network model so i am going to apply some in mathematics you would have heard about convolution function so what is the use of this convolution function so i am going to apply some convolutional mask on the input i am going to extract some edges and important corners and i am going to come up with some important prediction result what is going to happen in the future so the moving filter or the convolution it applies to a certain neighborhood of nodes it may be pixels so where the filter applied is 0.5 into node value so facebook has facial recognition software so it uses the cnns to find solution for mission uh, vision projects so there are many layers to a cnn convolutional neural network models clear with us so what do you mean by the cnn so you can see here so i have this input convolutional deep neural network models so whatever is the input it is given to the feature maps so i am going for subsampling so i have f dot maps you have different layers of convolution here subsampling and fully connected so it passes through uh, it has a convolution layer and a pooling layer so whenever i am going to construct any type of neural network models layers are the main building blocks so whether it may be a rnn recurrent neural network model or it can be a mlp multi layer perceptron or it can be a rnn recurrent neural network model or convolutional neural network model so you can see here so from a input it goes to feature maps so subsampling so it contains a convolution layer and a pooling layer before a fully connected hidden neuron layer so they reduce the number of parameters that need to be tuned they handle the high dimensionality of raw images clear with us so what are the uh, so important things you should know about deep learning fundamentals popular models within deep learning so i can go for convolutional neural networks recurrent neural networks deep belief networks generative adversarial networks so i can go for different types of neural network models clear with us so what do you mean by cnn convolutional neural network model or i can go for rnn recurrent neural network model deep belief networks generative adversarial networks so all these are the popularly used deep learning models or deep learning algorithms generative adversarial networks gan auto encoders so the inputs and outputs are represented as vectors or tensors so a neural network it may have the inputs where the individual pixel rgb values in an image are represented as vectors clear with this the layers of neurons that lie between the input layer and the output layer are called as hidden layers 
So this is where most of the process happens, where the neural network tries to solve some problem. So this is where most of the process happens. Clear with this? So whenever I am going to uh, discuss with you about deep learning models, so all these are the important fundamentals you should understand about these deep learning models. So whenever I am going to look at the hidden layers, it reveals a lot about the features that the network has learned to extract from the data. So it contains a node, an array of topographically sorted nodes, an edge. Clear with this, so how I am going to train the neural network models? I have different types of technique, gradient descent optimization technique. So dropout layers, so layers are the main building blocks in doing any kind of neural network models, computational graphs, back propagation models. So all these are the different types of techniques. Clear with this, so what are all the different techniques that are used? So whenever I want to create any neural network model, so all these are the different types of techniques that are involved in creating any type of neural network models. One minute, let me just continue. So firstly, I was discussing with you about neural networks. What do you mean by deep learning neural deep learning models? So I was discussing with you about convolutional neural networks. So next, I'm going to discuss with you about deep learning fundamentals. So the inputs and outputs are represented as vectors or tensors. You can call them as so technically you can call them. So each and every neuron it is called as a perceptron. And the inputs and outputs, they are represented as vectors or tensors in case of neural network models. So a neural network, it may have the inputs where the individual pixel RGB values in an image are represented as vectors. So the layers of neurons that lie between the input layer and the output layer are called as hidden layers. Clear with this, so what do you mean by this neural network models? So what are the different types of inputs and outputs that are present in this neural network models? So this is where most of the process happens, where the neural network tries to solve some problems. So where most of the process happens. So when we look at the hidden layers closely, it reveals a lot about the features that the network has learned to extract from the data. Different architectures of neural networks are formed by choosing which neurons to connect to other neurons in the next layer. Clear with us, so how this uh, neural network models, how it is being constructed? With the help of different, so all these are the different types of neural network models that are constructed. So I can go for CNN, convolutional neural network model, or I can go for RNN, recurrent neural networks, deep belief networks, GAN, generative adversarial networks. So I have to find the optimum values of weights. So whenever I am going to train any kind of, so how I am going to train a neural network? So far I just uh, gave you a brief description of neural networks. So next I am going to discuss with you about training a neural network model. So how I am going to train a neural network model. So I have to find the optimum values of weights of neural networks in order to get the desired output. So I have to choose the best weights or the optimal weights <coughs> in order to get the desired output. <clears throat> so in order to train a neural network model, so I am going to use the iterative gradient descent method. So I can go for different types of methods. I can go for iterative gradient descent method or I can go for some other type of methods in order to train a neural network model. <clears throat> so initially I have to start with the initialization of weights. And after random initialization, so firstly I need to uh, start with the initialization of weights. 
and after uh, initialization random initialization so i have to make predictions on the some subset of data with forward propagation process so after random initialization so i have to compute the cost function and update each weight by an amount proportional to dc by dw that is the derivative of the cost function with respect to the weight clear with this so the proportionality constant is known as the learning rate so the gradients can be calculated efficiently using the back propagation algorithm clear with this so whenever i am going to discuss with you about any type of neural network model so all these are the important points you should understand so i have to compute the cost function and update each weight by an amount proportional to dc by dw that is the derivative of the cost function with respect to weight so training a neural network model so the key observation of back propagation is because of chain rule of differentiation so how i am going to uh, calculate and how i am going to implement this neural network model so i have different types of techniques i can go for gradient descent optimization technique so what are the major challenges so whenever i am considering any kind of neural network models or machine learning models it has got its own advantages and disadvantages so what are all the main challenges in deep learning or whatever you call so what are the important challenges in deep learning or deep neural network models so they are overfitting and computation time so it takes more time to compute something so deep neural networks they are affected by overfitting so whenever i am going to train any uh, machine learning model so i have to give optimal weights so it should not be overfitted or underfitted so various uh, regularization methods i can go for different types of regularization methods like dropout method early stopping data augmentation transfer learning so all these methods are applied during the training to combat overfitting so i can go for different types of regularization method so all these are the different types i can go for dropout method early stopping data augmentation transfer learning clear with this so dropout regularization randomly omits units from the hidden layers by training so it helps in avoiding rag dependency so all these are the important points you should understand and dns they take into account several uh, training parameters like size number of layers number of units per layer learning rate initial weights clear with this so what are the important challenges involved in deep learning so all these are the important challenges involved in deep learning models so i can go for dropout layer so it is one of layers or the main building blocks so whenever i am constructing any kind of neural network models layers are the important building blocks layers are the main building blocks of any kind of neural network models so dropout layer it is one of the most popular regularization techniques used for neural networks so deep neural networks they are particularly prone to overfitting so if i have a neural network and it is not overfitting so we should be uh, using a bigger one and using dropout so how many neurons i can omit whenever i am training any neural network models accordingly i can go for this dropout layer so early stopping so what do you mean by this early stopping so all these so implementation trick so dropout is implemented in libraries like tensorflow and pytorch for doing different operations uh, for doing different functionality so we have got some separate modules in python so what do you mean by this tensorflow and pytorch so neural networks are trained using an algorithm called gradient descent 
data augmentation transfer learning so what do you mean by this transfer learning clear with this so far i just gave you a brief introduction to this uh, deep learning models so what do you mean by this deep neural networks what are the applications so i gave you some brief applications of deep learning so what do you mean by neural networks so what do you mean by deep learning so i have different types so all these are the important applications it can be used uh, in applications like computer vision language translation image captioning audio transcription molecular biology speech recognition self driving cars so it can be employed in a number of applications it can be used in computer vision applications so whenever i want to perform some open cv task it can be used in computer vision applications language translation so image captioning so whenever i want to add some caption to images it can be used in image captioning task audio transcription molecular biology speech recognition task self driving cars so it is an advanced version of machine learning so whenever i am going to consider machine learning or deep learning so it is a whenever i am considering deep learning so it is the next step after machine learning with advanced implementation so it is a leading technology in many of the industries it deals with uh, unstructured data clear with this it provides best solution for a variety of real world problems so they use ai programs instead of using previous rules they learn from examples to solve complicated problems deep learning techniques are used by many data scientists so they produce more accurate results so deep neural networks they produce more accurate results when compared to deep learning techniques clear with us so all these are the important things you should understand about deep learning so whenever i am uh, considering any of the deep learning models so all these are the important terms you should understand about deep learning so they are used in image classification task so what is the use of cnn cnns can be majorly used in any kind of image classification task so for example whenever i want to classify whether the given image or is a dog image or a cat image so it can be used in image classification task so input images are classified as cats or dogs so i can go for this deep learning techniques clear with this so what are the important applications of this deep learning <coughs> so they are used in finding the label that best describes the image how to do these tasks at a very early stage in their lives <coughs> <coughs> so they have the knowledge to quickly recognize patterns learn from prior experience and adapt to different image environments how the customer churn models how it is being implemented by employing this deep learning <coughs> algorithms <coughs> so far i just uh, gave you a brief uh, introduction to deep learning so next i am going to discuss with you about this project so what do you mean by this customer churn analysis so the paper it reviews the relevant studies on customer churn analysis on telecommunication industry <coughs> what is the customer churn rate so how many people are uh, included in the industry and how many people are leaving so i am going to do a detailed analysis on customer churn so churn analysis it is one of the worldwide used analysis on subscription oriented industries So whenever I want to analyze the customer behaviors to predict the customers which are about to leave the service agreement from a company. So the proposed model will first classify the churn customers data using classification algorithms. For example, random forest algorithm, decision tree algorithm. 
Clear with the strategies giving a brief overview of this customer churn analysis. So currently in the existing system what is happening? So I just gave you a brief introduction to what we are going to do in this project. So currently in the existing system it was predicted only for banking sector customers data set. So we can do this customer churn analysis for any kind of data set. So initially it was predicted only for banking sector customers data set. And also there was one algorithm used for prediction purpose at a time. So accuracy wise it wasn't accurate. So there was one algorithm used for prediction purpose at a time. So accuracy wise it wasn't accurate. So it's not possible to extract the useful information hidden in these data sets. Unless they are processed properly, it is not possible to extract the useful information hidden in these data sets. So in order to uh, understand, find out this hidden information, various analysis should be performed using the data mining techniques using various methods. So what are all the <coughs> disadvantage of the existing system? It is not uh, accurate. It is less accurate and less efficient when compared to the proposed system. In order to overcome the disadvantage of my existing system, so I am coming for the proposed system. So what happens in the proposed system? So in the proposed customer churn prediction model, it is evaluated using metrics such as accuracy, precision, recall, F measure, receiving operating characteristics area. So all these are uh, being considered, all these metrics are considered while evaluating. So the customer churns. So they reveal, uh, the results they reveal that our proposed churn prediction model produced better churn classification. So in the proposed system, we are using several uh, multiple machine learning algorithms like decision tree algorithm, random forest, linear regression, SVM, support vector machine algorithm, XGBoost, Adaboost classifiers. So different types of classifiers, multiple machine learning algorithms are used. So this is how the system architecture looks like. So I am just giving a brief overview, brief introduction to this project. So this is how my system architecture, so all these are the different blocks that are involved in my system architecture diagram. So I have a data set module, data set block. So it is given to the data pre-processing phase. So whenever I want to remove some null values or if I want to do some sort of encoding, it is given to the data pre-processing phase. And from the data pre-processing, it is given to the feature extraction. So features are nothing but important pieces of information which help us in solving the problem. So whatever is the type of problem, so how I am going to solve the problem with the help of various types of features. So it is given to the uh, model selection phase, training data and testing data. And finally, I am going to calculate the accuracy score here. So all these are the different blocks that are involved in the system architecture diagram. So what are the different hardware and software requirements that are essential to do this project? So I require a Windows 7, 8 or 10 64 bit operating system and 4 GB RAM memory capacity and software requirements, everything is developed using Python language and we are using Anaconda Navigator and Jupyter Notebook. So all these are the different hardware and software requirements that are essential to do this project. So next I am going to discuss with you about the implementation of this project. So firstly, I need to import the essential libraries. What are the important libraries that are required for my development? So firstly, I need to import the corresponding libraries. 
One minute, let me just continue. So firstly I need to import the <coughs> corresponding library. So what are the essential libraries that are required for my development? So firstly I need to import the essential libraries. So I am importing the pandas library in order to perform any kind of data manipulation task I require this pandas library and numpy stands for numerical python. In order to perform any kind of mathematical operations, I require this NumPy library. And Matplotlib and Seaborn library it is used for performing any kind of data visualization task. So firstly I need to import the essential libraries. What are the important libraries that are required for my development? So firstly I need to import the essential libraries. So using the pandas alias and this there is an input function called read csv function. Whichever input functions I have to call using the alias name using dot operator I have to call the corresponding input function. So I am just calling the read csv function and then I am reading the csv file. So customer churn dot csv it is stored in the variable data. And data dot head function it just provides the head of my data frame. It just prints the head of my data frame, the first five rows of my data frame. So whatever is the customer ID, gender, senior citizen, so all these are the different features. And data dot info function it just provides a information about my data frame. So totally it contains some 1043 entries. And what are the data types of different columns? So totally it contains one floating point type, two integer data type, 18 object types. And memory usage, it consumes some 1.1 plus megabytes of memory. And data dot is NA. So if there are any null values, it is going to return a boolean value of true or false. I am just summing up the null values. So you can see here, so how I am going to predict the customer term with the help of all these features, customer ID, gender, senior citizen, partner, dependence, tenure, phone service, online backup, device protection and data dot duplicated. So if there are any duplicate values, I am going to sum up the duplicate values. I am using the cmon alias sns dot set function. So style equal to I am giving here as white and palette. So within double quotes I am giving here as deep. Whatever is the palette and color quotes I am giving here as true. And using this cmon library there is an input function called dspan function left equal to true. SNS dot count plot so data of churn so I am picking and I am uh, showing how many SSL nodes are there so all this comes under EDA exploratory data analysis so I am going to visualize my data in the form of various types of visualization plots here so PLT dot I am just creating a pie chart so data of churn dot value count so how many values are present here and explode equal to and auto PCT parameter shadow start angle labels and data of total charges so I am just picking the total charges and replacing so wherever I have null values it is replaced by np dot man 
So you can see here total charges. I am converting this to floating data type, and I am I am calling this inbuilt function called info function. It provides an information about my data frame. So totally it contains some seven thousand thirty two entries. What are the data types of different columns? So it contains two floating point types, two integer data types, and seventeen object types. So totally it consumes some one point two plus megabytes of memory. And from this data, so I am picking total charges is less than zero. So I am uh, taking the count of all the total charges. Here, data dot columns. If not in customer ID, gender, monthly charges. So temporary columns. I have senior citizen, partner, dependents, tenure, phone service. So I have for column in temporary columns. So I am just formatting. You can see here senior citizen, partner, dependents, tenure. So I am just converting into an array. Whichever inbuilt functionalities of NumPy I want to use, using the alias name, using dot operator, I am just calling this array. From from this data, so I am picking the tenure dot to list, so it is converted to a temporary tenure here. So you can see here. So whatever is the minimum, I'm formatting temporary tenure dot minimum and temporary tenure dot maximum. So I'm defining the user defined function called tenure to group. So whenever I want to define any user defined function, so I have to use the def keyword followed by the name of the function. So you can see here. So I am just applying the lambda function, tenure to group, and passing this data along the column axis. So I am showing in the form of a count plot: zero to one year, two to three year, three to four year, one to two year, four to five year. So tenure group and the count I am taking along the y-axis. Clear with this? I am using this matplotlib alias plt dot and calling a subplot and figure size equal to eighteen cross eight. So I am creating a eighteen cross eight figure window. So data of tenure and hue equal to data of churn. Clear with this? So I am showing in the form of different types of visualization plots here. So SNS dot LN plot. So X equal to monthly charges and Y equal to total charges. So I am showing in the form of different types of visualization plots. And data dot info function it provides an information about my data frame. So totally how many entries it contains and what are the data types of different columns present in my data frame. Clear with this, so you can see here. So how many water? I have the churn and the customer ID. So I am going for this min-max scalar. So I am importing the min-max scalar from sklearn dot preprocessing. I am taking the tenure. So in doing any kind of machine learning development, EDA, visual analysis, exploratory data analysis, it plays a very very important step in improving the accuracy of my entire prediction model. So I am just dropping the tenure. So after doing all these EDA, after cleaning up the data, so what is the next step involved in my prediction? So whenever I want to convert the numerical values to the string value, there is an input function called get dummies function. So after doing this, I am importing the train test split module from sklearn dot model selection. So I am just initializing the train test split module and passing this data label test size. So I am going to split my data into seventy percent training data and thirty percent testing data. And then I am 
going for different types of classifier so i can go for this decision tree classifier basically i was uh, discussing with you about svm so you can see here i am just initializing this svc support vector classifier and there is a parameter called random state parameter so i am initializing the random state as 42 it is stored in the variable svm model So I am applying the classifier. Whatever is the SVM model, X train, X test, Y train, and then Y test. Clear with this? So I am just showing the confusion matrix and receiver operating characteristic. So how it varies? With this, I am just stopping this video. I hope. I am clear with my topics. In this video, I gave a brief introduction to deep learning, how the customer churns are being predicted by employing various deep learning techniques. If you have any queries, you can post your queries in the comment section. <coughs> Remaining things, I will just continue in my next videos. Thank you all.